Is there a way that human beings can sense impending tragedy? Some of the worst disasters in history have been foretold by those who claim to have premonitions. Who would have imagined that the Titanic, the ship that couldn't sink, would do just that on her maiden voyage in 1912? Well, 14 years before, this book came out. It told of the largest ship afloat, rich and famous passengers, a collision with an iceberg, a sinking, and not enough lifeboats. The ship was called the Titan. But if premonitions are so accurate, can nothing be done to stop them becoming reality? Every night, Chris Robinson, an engineer from Bedfordshire, dreams complex, disturbing images. Dreams that apparently come true, and they've been so accurate that the authorities listen to his warnings. He is designated a contact, and then really we act as a filter to see what he's saying and try and make something of it. If I'm crazy, they're crazy too, and they're not crazy, so this is really happening. Chris Robinson makes notes of his dreams. The images at first are meaningless, but when he decodes them, they seem to predict dramatic events. Dogs mean terrorists. Fish mean terrorists about to be caught. Snow means that the situation that I'm looking at is imminent and it's dangerous. Chris saw danger when he had a series of dreams about a Royal Air Force base, Stanmore Park in Middlesex. I saw dogs in a graveyard and I knew that dogs meant terrorists. I saw clocks ticking. There was uh, photographic equipment. Uh, there were all these strange symbols. Chris couldn't work out what the photographic equipment meant, but put together the other symbols predicted that terrorists were going to attack the airbase. The logbook there records how Chris phoned the guardroom to warn them of his premonition. They didn't really know what to say to me on the telephone, so I then decided that I wasn't going to mess about anymore. I was going to drive down there and present myself at the main gate. Can't really explain what it feels like to know that something is going to happen that you can't possibly really know in advance. Hello, sir. Hello, my name's Chris, Chris Robinson. Look, yes, sir. I phoned up I a couple of times. I want to speak to someone. I was nervous, that. but on the other hand, I knew that if I didn't go there and warn them, there could be a lot of people killed. In the guardroom, Chris Robinson was interviewed by the duty sergeant, Brian Earle. You have to be very careful when this situation arises because there's hoax bomb calls and such like. And the individual could have been a total madman for all we were concerned. It's always RAF Stanmore when I'm going past. Then I see, um, I see, um, The RAF police were naturally suspicious. Who was this man? And why was he making these claims? Well, there's a couple of planes on, on the ground, static, on the ground. Yeah. Contacted the chief inspector at uh, Bedfordshire Police to see if they knew of Chris. And in actual fact, they confirmed that, that he had assisted him. Um, through his dreams. Any, any idea of time scale? Any idea when this might happen? <laughs> I can't, uh, some things I can't tell you, Sergeant. I can't tell you, can't tell you it's going to be three o'clock next weekend on, on a Saturday night. I can't tell you things like that, but it won't be I was long. quite sceptical about this. But as a precaution, we did see to uh, double the guard for a week after his actual visit. Just over a month after Chris Robinson first dreamt about the base, this was the news. Two people are being questioned by police after a bomb went off at an RAF administration depot at Stanmore in northwest London. I initially felt shock and horror, but after I heard that nobody had been hurt, I felt absolutely delighted because I had been proved right again. There's speculation this morning that the bombers may have entered the base at the back where the perimeter fence adjoins a churchyard. I'd had the dogs, that meant the terrorists. I'd had the clocks ticking, that meant the bombs. But I'd also had this photographic equipment. And it wasn't until after the explosion that I learnt that the building that was destroyed was a store where the RAF kept their photographic equipment. But was it really such a surprise? Terrorists had attacked four military targets in just over a month. 
Chris Robinson's premonition about Stanmore Park could have been just a lucky guess or coincidence. What about this, what about this vehicle, Mr. Robinson? What about this yellow and green vehicle? Uh, it could what, be what just one suggest? in a billion chances, for instance, plane crashes. Uh, statistics show that there's one major plane crash in the world somewhere every two weeks. Coincidence can indeed explain away many cases. To me, I think that Chris Robinson's results are beyond coincidence. He's certainly come up with many interesting cases of things that are most unlikely to occur. And these interest me because they're not trivial things. Dan Eldon was only 22, but already a brilliant news photographer. He'd grown up in Africa. Covering the war in Somalia, he was taking pictures of an attack by American helicopter gunships when a Somali mob turned on him and killed him. What wasn't known at the time of his death was that a few weeks earlier, Dan's mother, Kathy, had been warned by Chris Robinson that her son was in grave danger. Chris was very concerned and came over to my house with a dream that he had had about a swarm of bees around my family. She then told me that her son was in Africa and I said to Kathy, um, I feel that the problem could be him, um, so please tell him to be careful. Up to that point, no journalists had been killed. And I believe that Dan, with his streetwise aspect in, in Africa and the fact that he was friends with so many people, that he would somehow make it through. The images Chris Robinson saw made his fears for the young photographer grow. But he couldn't see enough to prevent what was about to happen. Chris talked with a close friend of mine uh, on the weekend before Dan was killed. He had a number of images that he couldn't make sense of. Four dead photographers in a seaside place. Salt water will damage the lens. F4, rescue me, Kathy. Afterwards, it just makes so much sense. It's frightening. Talking about cameras, telescopic lenses, four dead photographers, there were indeed four who were killed. Salt water affecting the lens. Uh, they were in Mogadishu, which is a seaside town. And Dan, the day before he was killed, was photographing women marines in bikinis on the beach in Mogadishu. The F4 is the kind of lens that Dan was using. Rescue me, rescue me, and Kathy. That all makes sense to me. Some would say Chris Robinson's dreams make sense only with hindsight but the premonition of Dan Eldon's death turned out to be uncannily accurate. Chris didn't need hindsight for his next premonition. He was so sure it would happen, he was there when it did. I'd had a series of dreams about an airfield, and I wondered why this was, because I had no plans to visit an airbase or anything. And in the dreams there was rockets, there was aeroplanes, there was explosions in the sky. What did it all mean this time? Chris called his contact at Bedfordshire Police. He then described seeing these rockets going up in the sky and then colliding and these crowns coming down. In Chris's next dream, the crowns became parachutes. Suddenly, he knew what was about to happen. All these dreams um, made me realize that there was going to be a plane crash. But where and when? The following morning, he phoned a friend, national newspaper astrologer Penny Thornton, he just heard about an event taking place that day. Chris was very enthusiastic about going to an air show, um, simply because it somehow confirmed or affirmed to him um, the imagery of two planes crashing and fireworks and the parachutes descending, which he'd had in his dream. I decided to go. I had to go, really. There was nothing else she could do. I mean. I'd seen it all happen in advance, and I had to go there and know whether it was going to be real. Chris immediately set off for Fairford in Gloucestershire, and the world's largest military aviation display, the International Air Tattoo. One of his premonitions was about to become reality in front of his own eyes. I was absolutely convinced that this was going to happen. I wasn't sad or upset because I knew that the pilots of the planes came down safely on their parachutes.
people that were with me said, my God, you know, nobody can survive that. And I said, oh, no, don't worry. In my dream, they come out on their parachutes. There's no problem. Two Russian fighter planes collided today above tens of thousands of people at an international air show in Gloucestershire. Both pilots ejected and were only slightly injured. On the Saturday afternoon, Chris rang me at home. His initial words were, you'll never guess where I am. I was at the right place at the right time, but how did I know in advance? The pilots didn't. Those who've heard Chris Robinson's premonitions are ready to believe that he can foretell the future. Tragically, the clues to photographer Dan Eldon's death didn't add up in time. But since then, Chris has been able to help Dan's mother in another way. Kathy Eldon is a former journalist herself and wary of believing what she knows she wants to believe. But she's been astonished by the messages Chris has relayed through his dreams, messages only her son could have sent. He said he wanted money raised for the charity which was going to be named after him. He talked about film in his camera, where to find um, negatives that we had lost. There was just this sense of tremendous life and, and joy that radiated out of this character and made us all very happy to think that he was still around in such a positive way. After Dan Eldon's death, those remarkable pictures were gathered together and published as a tribute. And proceeds from the book go to the charity which his mother, Kathy, did set up in his memory. <laughs>